Hi, my name's Lee, I'm from MGI. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a gearbox and motor on a Zip Series buggy. To start off, you need to remove the cowling and gain access to the motor controller. You will need a power drill with a Phillips head attachment or just a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll also need a pair of pliers and you may also need a suction cup. Uh, I also like to use a piece of foam or a piece of cardboard so that every screw that I take off, I can put them into a particular order so I know which screws I've taken off and where they belong. So to start off, we'll gain access to the motor controller. We need to remove four screws. I'll place those four screws onto the foam so that I know what order they were taken out of. To gain access to the motor controller, it may sometimes just pop itself out, but you may also need to use a suction cup to help remove it. You'll notice that there is another four screws for the cover of the motor controller, so we'll need to disconnect those four screws. You can now take the cover off. I like to keep those four screws with the cover so I know where they belong. You now have access to the motor controller and you have your motor connections, your battery connections, also your stem cable, sensor and your solenoid connection. So the solenoid connection is only for the X5 series. Um, so in this case we'll have to disconnect that. So we'll start off with that, which is the lead that's on the high end of the motor. We'll also disconnect the sensor connection, which runs into the gearbox. And because we're replacing both the motor and the gearbox, uh, we'll, I'll disconnect the motor leads as well. So now that all those connections have been removed, we can sit the motor controller into the housing and start to remove the 13 screws from the housing. Okay, now that we've removed all the 13 screws from the housing, you can simply pop the entire cowling off, having the motor controller slide through and sit the cowling to the side. You'll also notice that the motor has a housing around it uh, to keep it a brace, to keep it in a position, you'll need to remove the four screws. So we'll proceed with removing those four screws first. and then removing the brace. I'll just keep those four screws with the brace so that I know where they belong. And then finally, the last four screws are for the bearings on either side of the gearbox. So I'll proceed with removing them. And I'll place those four screws in a separate part of the foam so that I know where they belong. Okay, you can now put the motor controller to the side. Now that the four screws have been removed from the bearings, you can take the gearbox and motor out of the housing, and you will now be able to access three more screws, which are one, two, and three. These three screws connect the gearbox to the motor. So, I'll proceed with removing these three screws. So now the three screws have been taken out, you can simply pull the motor away from the gearbox and to reconnect you want to make sure that your gasket is in the right position, running along smoothly and then reconnect the motor and the gearbox like so. until it sits in the position. Sometimes you need to give it a bit of a wiggle in order for it to get back in the position. You want to have the holes aligned with the screws and then fasten the three screws.
Now that it's back together, you can put the motor and gearbox back into its position. When you're putting it all back together, just make sure that all the cables are tucked away nicely. You don't want to pinch any of the cables from the motor controller. Okay, so now that's all back into position, we want to start by putting the bearings fastened back onto the housing. So we'll start off with the outer bearings on the gearbox. And followed by the brace, we'll put the brace over the motor. The four screws. Okay, now that the brace has been fitted into position, we need to next connect all the wiring to the motor controller. So we'll start off with connecting the motor connections, which is your positive and negative. This is the positive connection, and you'll see that it's marked on here, positive. So we'll start off with the motor positive, connect that into place, followed by the motor negative. Again, it's marked on the controller there. Then we'll go with the sensor, so the sensor will get plugged into here, like so. And then finally, we want the motor solenoid to be connected. So we'll connect that, like so. And then we'll put the cover back over, but we're just gonna make sure that all these leads are in their respective grooves before fitting the cover. Set the cover onto place and just ensure each connection is properly positioned into the groove and then fasten. Once all the connections are into their rightful position, then you want to feed the motor controller through the cowling. and sit the cowling back onto the buggy. We'll then tuck all these cables away so they don't get pinched and fasten the motor controller back into the position. Okay, now the motor controller is fitted. We want to ensure that there's nothing getting caught up in the cowling and you'll feel it if there is uh, a connection or a cable or anything in the way but as I said just make sure that all the cabling is tucked away nice and neat and then we'll proceed with fastening the 13 screws back onto the cowling so start from the top Okay, now that the 13 screws have been fastened to the cowling, um, it's a good idea to tip the buggy up into its operating position and attach the battery. Uh, make sure that you test all the, uh, the functions properly uh, to ensure everything's working okay. And that's how you replace a motor and gearbox on a Zip Series buggy. If you'd like any more information, please visit our website www.mgigolf.com.